Jesus, if you're real, I want you to meet me right now. So these are words of Ryan Reese. I just listened to his testimony. And this guy was into rock and roll and drugs and alcohol and was it, he was uh, you know hanging out with the bands and touring all over the world and he was saying all the places he went and finally ends up in Panama City and guess where he was? He was in a hotel. And as most of you know, our ministry puts Bibles in the hotels, right? And he cries out and he says, Jesus, if you're really real, I want to meet you. And he opens up, and he said he's been to other hotels, and what happened, he, that hotel he was in, in Panama City, he opens up and he starts reading God's Word. It's the power of God's Word, the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And this is that minute, one of them ministries, you know, we have specific avenues and places we go to place the Word of God. And where other ministries don't, because God's blessed them to do wherever those specific areas they need. And, and minister to as we keep praying as the body of Christ for those ministries too. And, and that's one of the big things uh, for us. Pray for us. There are thousands of testimonies. I mean, they print books and I, w I can go download online and Gideon.org. And I can just pull up all these testimonies of people. And I was doing that this week. And I started listening to the power of God's word and... and you know, I was in the muck and miry clay like I'm sure all of us who are here have accepted Christ. Someday we had we met Him. We were in a low point. We were down in the valley, and where do you go when you're in the valley? You look up. And praise God, Jesus is there with open arms because none of us is righteous enough. None of us but Him. Right. Amen. Amen. And uh, so this ministry, it's really interesting... Uh, I got involved about 22 years ago, and this gentleman who worked for the Chevrolet place, Randy Traeger, he meets me, and I, I just decided to accept Christ. I didn't know too much about this ministry yet, right? <laughs> he says, you should join the Gideons. And over in, over here, we had a remnant. Uh, Brother Kurt, was I talking to you about Ken Bansomer? <laughs> so Ken was part of the ministry. Dr. Bob Meyer, if you knew him, he went home to be with the Lord recently. And we were this remnant in David Loam of believers here. So don't despise small beginnings, the word says. I guess this verse here, everybody pretty much knows it. Isaiah 55, 11 is kind of like the verse of the Gideons. It says, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty or void, some translations, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Wow. And that we get over and over, we get testimonies of, of pastors in prisons. So they take them old Bibles that might have a battered cover like this. Or, and this isn't one of the Gideons, but that's all right. And we put a soft cover and we send these to the prisons. So the prison ministries have Bibles for the incarcerated, men and women, going in, sharing the gospel. And we've had pastors come out of prisons that the power of God's Word just touches their heart, their mind, their soul, and they love the Lord and their neighbors, and they preach the gospel. And more people come to the saving knowledge of God. Locally, we go around to the schools, and we still stand out there <laughs> We get persecution sometimes from the parents and they start getting all upset and we just go, you know what, we're here to be good witnesses. We're not handing out any, anything but the power and these kids need these power, this power that's in this word. And uh, pray for us. We're going to next Monday go to a local high school here and uh, hand these out. We can only go out on the sidewalks. You know, they keep you from going in the school years ago before. They used to let the men and women go in to the schools and physically distribute in the classroom the Word of God. So we all know where we are right now in this world, the perilous times we are in. But praise be to God, we have a Savior. We have a Savior that gave us a, an inheritance, gave us a secret place in heaven that nobody can take away. Nobody can take away my retirement fund with Jesus. Hallelujah. There is nobody who can. It's the power of this word. Whether they like it or not, Jesus is the same 
yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? That's who he is. Uh, pray for us. Uh, you might see some Gideons Wednesday, the cruise ships here, and the t tenders come in and walk by Moko Aikawa, and we're, we're witnessing the men and women there, asking them if they'd like the word, if they'd like prayer. I had a friend one time said, the Bible says you don't stand outside or go and give Bibles away. And I said, okay, I get that to a point. I mean, let's get this little micromanaging here. Uh, come on, let's work on the, the majors and what's inside this word. I mean, they got to read it. They got to hear it. Hopefully they get to the back page, which we're going to finish up and talk about. This is the most important part in here. The way it's written because of what Jesus finished at the cross. So if anybody like myself is saying something that you don't agree with, please go to your Bible. Look it up. Write it down. Ask God to reveal it. Because, you know, I, I'm do, I just praise God for his word. I might say something a little up. But we'll move on and we'll say the military too. I mean, we've, hear, we've uh, see, heard the testimonies of men and women. They've had them here, a guy behind a tree, they're in battle. Bullet hits him here, and he's, he doesn't die. We've heard of these kind of testimonies. <clears throat> the miners, they go down the mine shaft. Little girl brought this home one day, and they were of a certain uh, religion. Dad so what do you got there? What are you reading? So he takes it, puts it in his pocket, lunchbox goes down to <coughs> the mine shaft. They get trapped in there. They rescue them, but they all sign the back of the book that says, uh, My decision to receive Christ as my Savior, confessing to God that I am a sinner and believing that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins on the cross and was raised for my justification, I do now receive and confess Him as personal Savior. And they, when they rescued Him, they found this uh, sign by all the men who were down in that mine shaft. Things like that. You've probably heard that one before. But it's the power of God unto salvation. Amen? Amen. Now, our, anytime you ever plant seed into the kingdom of God, through this ministry, it goes to Nashville, Tennessee, and it goes to print all these different scriptures in these small forms, and uh, even in uh, mostly English and uh, Spanish for the U.S., so you got all these publishers and Bible printers and overseas. So they use those printing presses over in the mainland. So we're over in 200 countries now and 197 languages. And the real cool thing is we got a little Bible app card, Gideon.org. And you can go in there, type in the language, language you want, and it'll translate the Bible in that language. You know, this, these, these devices we have are awesome, right? To, when they're used correctly for the glorifying of God, right? Amen. So we have these, these opportunities to share with men and women, boys and girls, the saving knowledge of Christ. And uh, it's just the power of his word. And then our, the, the Gideon Auxiliary are the ladies married to the men who are our, um, our helpers God gives us. And they're, they're awesome. They, their line of uh, uh, obedience to God is to distribute these same little testaments to nurses, uh, stations in the hospital, to uh, even dentists, doctor's offices we, tr we get them into and give them Bibles so when the people are sitting there, they got something. You know, when you're in anguish, when you're in pain, and you need, you need comfort and strength, we put the large print ones in the hospitals. Also has the plan of salvation. There's been many stories of nurses, doctors, especially nurses, who will pray for somebody virtually is dying. And we've had multiple testimonies of men and women saying, yes, uh, today I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to confess all my sins. And I, want, I believe by faith, by grace through Jesus Christ, that he died on the sin, died for all my sins if I confess them. One scripture that set me free it was 1 John 1 9. I think we all know that one. That if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All means everything, everything I ever did. And He throws that sin out there 
in the sea of forgetfulness, amen? And as far as the west is from the east, there's no other way to salvation, right? There is no other way to salvation but through Jesus Christ. So, on that way out, or if you didn't get one of these, pray. If, if God has put on your heart to uh, plant seed into the ministry, you can grab one of these. It's all postmark or not postmark but our address and send it in and 100 percent of everything given to this ministry we're all just like your church it's all for the glory of god and uh so they print those bibles in the u.s we have what we call a faith fund now that's specifically when all the gideons get together in our camp we just had one and uh this gentleman from asia talk about a man on fire this man they witnessed, um, and he's a Gideon, just loves the Lord. He grew up in um, Hinduism, and those countries are so full of, you know, the Muslims, and, and the Muslims burned down this Christian church, and uh, the, the dormitories in this one brother was sleeping, and the fire wakes him up. So obviously he gets up and he escapes, and he's running away, and then they, the Muslims catch him. And his testimony showed us the guy in pictures. They, they tried to take his head off. And he almost bled to death. They got him to the hospital. He met Jesus. He went to heaven. He said, Jesus said, you're not done here yet. And he healed the guy two weeks later. And then after two weeks, same thing happened where he got an infection. And the enemy was trying to take him down. But God, he went to heaven the second time he told us his testimony. And he said, I'm not done with you, Jesus told him, and he came back. He became a pastor. The very interesting thing was the gentleman who was a Gideon, he received one of these in his language in Asia. I forget what country. And it, his, all his family became born again through the power of God's Word. I got a question. Has any of you been at a college or a intermediate school or a high school where the Gideon's been standing outside and handing these out? Any hands? One, two, three, four. Okay. So keep praying for us. We need to keep reaching intermediate school, high school, and colleges. With the power of God, God does the transforming. There's nothing I can do about that. My walk, I just wanted to share this with you because... Uh, these two guys, <laughs> talk about small beginnings, you know. It's just a brief history of how God takes two seeds, two souls, and he puts two souls together over a hundred years now. 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For no other foundation can no man lay than that is in the Lord, laid in the Lord, which is Christ Jesus. So this guy, John Wilkinson, he's 13 years old. Praise God, his parents were born-again Christians, raised. And at 13, he accepted Christ as a Savior because his mom and dad just really impressed on him the power of God's Word, reading the Bible and praying. About six years later, his mom passes away, and I guess on his deathbed, he said that he promised his mom he would continue to read the Bible and pray the rest of his life. So 26 years later, he gets this job. He's, he's a salesperson. <laughs> I'm a salesperson too. <laughs> Praise God. He's blessed me so much because of what he's done. Yeah, and uh, so he meets, um, he meets Samuel Hill. His name was John Wilkinson in Janesville. So him and Sam meet in Boscoville, Wisconsin, which is kind of west of the or east of the Mississippi River. I grew up in Wisconsin and Burlington. And all this, how God has shown me and plants me here in this beautiful place. And he plants these two guys, Samuel Hill and Wilkinson. They're at a logging convention, so they go to the Central Hotel in Boscoville. I personally drove there in 2015. I wanted to see the place. Uh, you got this big old rock, you know, coming into the city. The Gideons were here kind of thing. And they got the big brass plate and the whole history. And then I went to the hotel and they take you up to the room and they got, you know, that marked off. It's a, on the historical register. And 
But praise be to God. God puts these two guys in the, in the um, lobby. He's looking for a room, and the receptionist said, well, we have a room, and you can share it with that man over there. And he points out Sam, and he talks to Sam. Sam's over there writing his orders. The history goes, and they share the same room. There was two beds in the room. They pull out the Bible at the nightstand, and the two guys start sharing the Word of God together. Well, then they met another guy, uh, McKnight, Mr. McKnight, and they uh, started at a YMCA in Janesville. And then from there, the Gideon ministry took off. I mean, God only knows how many seeds are in an apple, right? And how many apple trees you plant and how many seeds it's going to grow. So this is the seed bag I ordered from him. I said, we got to keep planting seeds. And that's really all the mandate for every person who's in the body of Christ. God may have not given you uh, uh, the gift of evangelism, but he's given you so many other gifts, at least one for the kingdom of God. And when you're obedient to God, he does and provides everything you need. He's our Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Amen. And it's, it's awesome to serve him and all the family of God. I mean, all my, my uh, you know, family is all back there in Wisconsin and Madison, but I have this family of God here all through the world who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, i got to read these because this is the most essential doctrine, and I know you folks know this. I know you know this, but hey, nothing changes because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When I witness to people, it doesn't matter what they think because He's the same. Nothing changes with Him. The Word of God is so written it's so powerful, and it's sure, and it's yes and amen to the glory of God. We all know this, and this is all in the back of these scriptures. So when the kids take them, we try to get them here. We inform them, please go to the back, get alone with God, and read these scriptures. And I'm going to read them. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life, the gift of God. Romans 5, 8 says, but God shows his love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He went to the cross, said nothing. I mean, he had his last seven statements and gave up the ghost. And hallelujah, he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. And you can't change that world. If you're hearing this, it's the only way to salvation. So please accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The time's getting short and the enemy knows it. And we see the perilous times we're in. So it's so important to get the word of God and plant seeds in our community and whatever places God has all you. We are all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. There ain't one that's righteous, it says in Romans 3.10. God's remedy for sin, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's Romans 6.23. But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are His, we are His beloved, our daughters and sisters of Christ Jesus. Amen. There's nobody can take that. You know, the go-to scripture at the end of Romans 8, right? What does it say? Audience participation is welcome, saints. What is the last verse in Romans 8? You know it. You know it. No, I forgot it. Nah. <laughs> Nothing will separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Is that death or perilous times or all the list of that last verse? When I get down in the dumps... That's where I go. And also, well, Matthew 6 is really good. The worry chapter. Don't worry. Have faith in God and what He finished at the cross and rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen. Amen. That's uh, just about ready to read that. 1 Corinthians 5, 3 and 4. Death, burial, and resurrected on the third day. You have to confess your sins. You have to admit Admit it. You're a sinner. You need a Savior. And you can't save yourself. And you don't have to put a shirt and tie and go door to door. There's no works you have to do. It's a free gift of God. It's so simple. It's not that difficult. 
to share this truth with your neighbors and friends and where you work and hallelujah give him the glory and praise because behold he stands at the door and he knocks if anybody hears his voice and opens the door he will come to him i was when we were oh glory to god it says when jesus is lifted up all men would be drawn to him and him alone because he's the only way to salvation amen for everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved you can come as you are wow we don't need to go back and look at what the enemy said. You did this. You did that. The accuser of their brethren. We go, no. Take it to my boss who came down from the cross, Satan. Tell him. Tell him what this says. The sword of the Spirit with the full Word of God. And tell him. This is what the Word of God says. You can't change it. Your time's getting short. And I'm going to stand with the full armor of God. And I'm going to continue to stand no matter what you think. And what the world's telling you and the lies the world is professing, because that's just the enemy in the world. There's no other way to salvation but through Jesus Christ, who has died, resurrected, shed his own blood for you to be saved forever. The government is not going to give you that. We need to get involved with the things of God in these last days. Amen? Now, seek a church this is the church we are the church continue to fellowship together love the lord together no matter how difficult that can be sometimes grow in the knowledge and the grace of our lord jesus christ amen so because if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved god's word is yes and amen he doesn't go back on his word like man does Amen. Amen. We all lied once and we had to confess if we lied and we better have and said, God, you're the truth. You're the way and you're the only life. Whoever hears his word and believes in him who sent me, Jesus said, has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Amen. So, Father, I thank you that you gave and opened up those ears spiritually and those eyes spiritually that needed to hear and see who they are. And, Lord, work on the hearts of those who are still waiting, who are still haven't made that decision. Lord, your church is still here, and we ask that the church will rise up and continue to reach people for Christ till the day you come back we thank you god for all your finished work we thank you for each brother and sister here you would bless their hands and feet as they go out this week we only got today right now but bless them and use them in a mighty way for the kingdom of god in jesus mighty name amen amen, amen. hallelujah